Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Senescent cells increase with age and can have a detrimental effect on health. In animal models, removing them, either with drugs or genetically, has been shown to have positive effects. There are senolytics such as questin and fisetin, but can we do anything to minimize the buildup of senescent cells through lifestyle? This review paper looks at that question. Cellular senescence is when a cell is no longer dividing or performing its function. It is still metabolically active and produces inflammatory signals which contribute to chronic diseases of aging. Some senolytics and senomorphics have been identified which reduce the burden of senescent cells, but less attention has been paid to the lifestyle factors that can also be used to help. The authors looked at these lifestyle factors and reviewed the current evidence for each one of them in relation to how they impact the burden of senescent cells. A quick review of senescent cells. Senescent cells are cells which have reached cell cycle arrest, which means they are no longer dividing. They also no longer perform their primary function. There are cells such as neurons which also do not divide, but still function correctly, so these are not senescent. Senescent cells come in different forms, but commonly they will secrete a cocktail of inflammatory and pro-growth chemicals called senescence-associated secretory phenotype, or SASP. Especially when we are young, senescent cells perform useful functions. Tissue remodeling in the embryo and wound healing are two of these. They are an alternative end state for a cell if it's in danger of becoming cancerous, so they are also anti-cancer. When our immune system is working correctly, the SASP factors attract white blood cells to come and remove the senescent cells. However, as we get older, this does not happen as effectively and they accumulate, leading to chronic inflammation, organ dysfunction, and exacerbating the diseases of aging. Cells become senescent because of various stresses such as DNA damage, excessive oxidative stress, and inflammation. In turn, these can be driven by obesity, smoking, excessive alcohol, and high blood sugar, among other factors. Let's look at specific factors, starting with exercise. The relationship between exercise and senescence is not straightforward. In animal models, there is some evidence that senescent cells are involved in rebuilding muscle after exercise, and that excessive high-intensity exercise can cause higher senescence, in this case, in the hippocampus of rats. However, in general, exercise seems to reduce senescent cells, and as we will see in the studies, the exercise appears to be quite extensive. These data are from human studies where the young are sedentary adults aged between 24, and SED are sedentary individuals aged around 44 and above, and EX are master athletes age matched with the sedentary group who ran between 30 and 90 miles a week, so a significant amount. P16 is a marker of senescence, and it was significantly lower in the gut of the exercising cohort, as was interleukin-6, a marker of inflammation and a common component of SASP, showing a reduced senescent burden. Another study had similar results, this time in vascular endothelial cells, the cells lining the inside of your veins and arteries. Again, they divided the groups into young sedentary, old sedentary, and old exercised, with the older group being around 60. The exercise was aerobic and for five or more days per week for 45 minutes a session. So again, quite extensive. P53, P21 and P16 are all markers of senescence and were 68, 32 and 71% lower respectively in the older exercise cohort compared to the older sedentary cohort. Turning to diet, both chronically high glucose and glucose spikes in the blood have been shown to cause senescence. This comes from one study on cultured human endothelial cells. NG's normal glucose of 5 millimolar, HG is constant high glucose at 22 millimolar, and NHG is intermittent, changing between 5 and 22 millimolar. We can see that high blood sugar increases senescent markers by about 50%. However, the intermittent had the biggest impact on senescence at about 150% increase. So even if blood sugar is normal, after meal spikes can still be a concern. There are a couple of studies on calorie restriction and intermittent feeding in humans. 
The first, on approximately 15% CR, saw a significant reduction in P16 and interleukin-6 for adults with an average age of 62. The results for intermittent fasting were less clear. The trial lasted 30 days and involved 17 to 19 hours of fasting a day, and the subjects were young males. P16, P21 tended lower, but did not reach significance in the 30 days. P53 increased, but then came back to baseline. So not clear that this is effective for reducing senescent cells. They did not quote any human trials on high fat diets. In mice, a high fat diet is specifically used to make mice obese and does increase senescent cells. Whether this was because of the obesity or the diet is not clear. And whether this can be applied to a ketogenic diet is also not clear to me either. The effects of protein are complicated. High protein helps build muscle and reduce inflammation after exercise. However, in mouse models, lower protein extends lifespan. So this looks like a trade-off. One thing to keep in mind is that mice in a lab live in a very stable, safe environment where frailty may be less of an issue but may not be a good proxy for humans living in the real world. High protein in younger people was associated with higher mortality. However, this was reversed for people over 65. A high protein diet did cause an increase in senescent cells in mice livers. Polyphenols such as questin and fisetin have been shown to reduce senescent cells. I will not cover them as supplements in this video, but diets high in polyphenols and monounsaturated fatty acids have reduced inflammation, reactive oxygen species, and apoptosis. This trial was a crossover randomized trial for four weeks comparing Mediterranean diet to a saturated fatty acid diet and a low-fat, high-carb diet, CHOALA. The graphs came from culturing cells in the serum from the participants, so a little indirect but we can see that in each case, the Mediterranean diet had the best outcome. And finally, sleep. There has not been much published on sleep deprivation and senescence, but there are a couple of studies. This is from a study in mice, where sleep was broken up every two minutes during the light period when the mice sleep as they're nocturnal. These images are of endothelial cells and show increased markers of senescence particularly P16 in the sleep fragmented or SF group in comparison to the control group. And this was in older adults aged over 61 who had one night of partial sleep deprivation where they were only allowed to sleep between 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. Even this one night showed a significant increase in SASP gene expression. Though having a good night's sleep the next night brought them almost back to baseline. For this, the authors used a composite score based on the expression of the nine genes. Probably no great surprises in this list of activities, though it is interesting that even with a standard blood sugar, continuous spikes raise the senescence in the endothelial cells, at least in vitro. And of course, the importance of getting a good night's sleep. Thank you for your attention. I hope that you found the video helpful and I wish you all well.